Welcome to the 41st millennium. Things are a bit tumultuous here. The emperor of mankind decays on his golden throne, requiring the sacrifice of billions of human lives to maintain his state of living death. Because the only thing enabling interstellar travel through the demon-infested hell dimension known as the Warp is his psychic beacon. Also, said demons are constantly pouring out of a gigantic space tear known as the Eye of Terror, devouring and corrupting entire planets for fun. There are fungus-based psychopaths that can pop up on any planet at any time and form violent hordes capable of conquering entire systems, raiding parties of torture-crazed space elves and unflinching robot skeletons who serve terrifying star gods. Oh, and then there's the small problem of an all-devouring swarm of hive-mind-connected insectoid horrors encroaching from all directions of space, threatening to devour all biological matter in the galaxy. What's that? You want to go back to your own time? Oh, but you only just got here. The universe created for the Warhammer 40,000 tabletop game has an incredibly rich, varied, and frankly terrifying lore that has been built up and expanded upon since the release of Rogue Trader back in 1987. But for now, we're more interested in what happens when dice, terrain, and meticulously painted and detailed miniatures make the jump into the digital realm. A great many licensed video games have dipped into the wealth of content offered by the 40k universe over the years, and in this video we're ranking, judging, and then arranging all of them from the downright heretical to the true Astartes. This ranking is based on an overall weighing up of critical reception, as well as other factors like sales, legacy, and how impressive the game was at the time of release. We're not including mobile-only titles or collectible card games, but we are including games based on products that have spun off from the 40k universe, so fans of Necromunda, Inquisitor, Battlefleet, Gothic, and the like can rest easy. No Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigma, though, but don't worry, there's plenty of futuristic tabletop-based mayhem to sink your big orky fangs into. We should also note that there are two Warhammer 40,000 games that simply don't have enough information available that would allow us to rank them, so we'd like to take this time to apologise to fans of Warhammer 40,000 Glory and Death and Space Hulk, both for the Nokia N-Gage. Sorry, N-Gage fans, but I heard that the Emperor actually deemed that console to be heretical Xenos technology anyway, so it's probably for the best. Right then, with all that said, it's time to gird your loins for battle, prepare your ears for lots of gratuitous Latin, and strap yourself in for a long land speeder ride, because in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only games. Let's rank them. I'm Inquisitor Lord Ben. And I'm Chapter Master Peter from Triple Jump, and here is every Warhammer 40,000 video game ranked from worst to best. Number 46, Warhammer 40,000 Storm of Vengeance, PC 2014. Warhammer 40,000 Storm of Vengeance, like many titles at the lower end of our list, originated as a mobile game before making Planetfall on the PC, and in this example especially, that fact is painfully evident. Looking a bit like Warhammer 40,000 meets Plants vs Zombies, this lane-based strategy game sees players placing buildings along the left-hand side of the screen, which generate units to march across to the right-hand side, engaging in combat with enemy units who are doing the same thing but in reverse. Featuring the mysterious and sinister Space Marine chapter known as the Dark Angel, Angels facing off against the endless greenskin hordes of infamous orc warlord Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka, Storm of Vengeance does nothing to encapsulate how epic that confrontation should be, and instead offers a slow-paced and uncompelling strategy experience with abysmal AI and very few redeeming features. The iOS version got a mixed reception, and some reviewers did find things to appreciate, like a detailed tech tree and some interesting unit abilities, but PC gamers who expect far more from their desolate, futuristic battlefields absolutely lambasted the game game and rightly called out that it was basically a reskin of developer Eutechnics's previous offering, Ninja Cats vs Samurai Dogs. Yes. That kind of laziness just isn't going to cut it in the 40k universe, and Storm of Vengeance was left to go twisting off back into the warp along with all other eldritch abominations. Number 45. Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolf. PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. 2017. 
A combination of XCOM-style squad-based tactics and deck-building, Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolf certainly had the potential to be an interesting title, but alas, said potential was squandered as the underhanded pay-to-win mechanics from its mobile roots manifested themselves as a tremendous progress-blocking grind wall in the other versions. In 40k lore, the Space Wolves are a chapter of Space Marine Viking berserkers with sharp fangs, fuzzy manes, and other such wolf attributes. Iconic and instantly recognizable, these interstellar warriors are certainly deserved of a video game adaptation to call their own, but unfortunately they've been stuck with a clunky port of an uninspiring mobile game. Honestly, Lehman Russ would be enraged. In Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolf, players must attempt to turn the tide against the forces of chaos that have invaded an Imperial planet. As the Space Wolf's ship emerges from the warp, it is immediately destroyed by the Chaos Fleet, and the story follows a small group of battle brothers who manage to survive and reach the planet's surface. Combat is turn-based, and players collect and combine cards to build a deck, which they use to perform actions, choose equipment, and move around the battlefields. It sounds and looks fine for a mobile port, but lackluster gameplay and awkward mechanics hold it back, and the unfair difficulty level caused by its mobile game origins ultimately make this lupine adventure a tough one to get through. A bit of a howler, really. <laughs> yeah. Wolves. Number 44. Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade. PC. 2050. In 40k lore, a Freeblade is an Imperial Knight who has forsaken their house and taken on their own mission across the galaxy. An Imperial Knight is an enormous, heavily armed and armoured walker with a single integrated pilot that's packing enough ordnance to level a small city, and Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade wires players into the pilot seat of one of these monolithic mechs. Yet, somehow, it still manages to be a thoroughly humdrum experience. We'd like to blame this on the fact that it's a port from a mobile game again, and so we will absolutely do just that. I did that just there. Did you did you hear? Were you paying attention? Originating on iOS, Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade was one of the first games to utilize Apple's 3D Touch technology, which allows touchscreens to distinguish between various levels of applied force using capacitive sensors in the device's retina display to read microscopic changes in pressure between the cover glass and the backlight. This all sounds very nice and technologically impressive, but doesn't help much when it comes to the PC version. PC gamers looking for an action-packed blast through war-torn landscapes in an enormous Imperial mech are left with a somewhat basic on-rail shooter that has an energy system that feels specifically designed to siphon your hard-earned credits, crowns, and aquilas. At the end of the day, if your product can't make stomping around in a tooled-up war titan exciting for more than 20 minutes, there's something not quite right with your approach to making video games. Number 43. The Horus Heresy – Betrayal at Kalth PC 2020. The Horus Heresy is an event in the Warhammer 40,000 timeline in which the Emperor of Mankind was betrayed by one of his most trusted and powerful followers, the Primarch known as Horus. This resulted in the creation of the Chaos Space Marine chapters, hosts of absurdly powerful, corrupted, undying super soldiers furiously dedicated to the downfall of mankind. As you can imagine, this comes up quite a lot. The Horus Heresy Betrayal at Kalth is a VR-compatible video game adaptation of the Games Workshop board game of the same name, which allows players to take part in epic confrontations between the loyal Ultramarine Space Marines and their fallen brothers, the traitorous Wordbearers Legion. It all sounds quite good on paper. The board game is made by Games Workshop, so you know the mechanics are going to be solid. All the over-the-top 40k lore and imagery is present and correct, and the optional VR support should allow players to get satisfyingly up close and personal with proceedings. Unfortunately, a quick scan of the Steam reviews section will reveal the main problem that this game suffers with, and that's the fact that it was abandoned in an unfinished state after many early adopters spent good money on it. The potential for a great social immersive digital board game experience experience was there, but it was squandered in a betrayal on par with that of Horus himself. Number 42. Eisenhorn Xenos PC 2016 According to 40k lore, Inquisitors are supremely capable and devoted agents of the Emperor, with the power to do whatever they deem necessary to protect the Imperium from the alien, the mutant, and the heretic, up to and including the annihilation of entire planets. One of the most famous, or should that be infamous, Inquisitors is one Gregor Eisenhorn, who originated in the excellent Eisenhorn novels written by respected author Dan Abnett. 
These gripping books tell the story of Eisenhorn and his retinue of fascinating companions as they come face to face with humanity's most immediate and terrifying threats. It's a shame, then, that the video game adaptation of these demon-infested science fiction crime stories turned out to be a bit of a mess. Releasing on mobile devices first, yes, we're back to those again, Eisenhorn Xenos was developed by Pixel Hero Games and attempted to convey the grandiosity and mystery of the Inquisition through the medium of a third-person action adventure title. Unfortunately marred by numerous uninspired quick-time events, overly simple combat mechanics, visuals that lacked polish, and monotonous voice acting, Eisenhorn Xenos took the mountain of delectable ingredients that its source material offered and served up something completely half-baked and uninteresting. Some reviewers saw fit to throw words like disastrous around and all agreed that even fans of the books would struggle to enjoy this unfavorable adaptation. It's surprising that the Inquisition itself didn't come after Pixel Hero Games for this heresy. Actually, has anyone heard from them lately? Hello? Number 41. Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command PC 2020 the 40k tabletop game doesn't really explore in-atmosphere airborne combat. Flying units exist, but their use is somewhat limited thanks to the scale of the game and factors like space constraints on the tabletop itself, and so the spin-off game, Battlefleet Gothic, takes the combat out of the atmosphere and into the dark void of space. A developer known as Binary Planets decided that there was a gap in the market here and attempted to fill the space in between, pitting the heavily armed aircraft of the Imperium against the ramshackle but deadly Orc Air Force. Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command undoubtedly has a cool premise, but unfortunately it didn't translate into a top-flight title because planes. Attempting to represent airborne clashes through a turn-based combat system, Aeronautica Imperialis had players issuing orders to their various craft and setting up their movement and actions while the gameplay is paused before committing to the move. Once both players have done this, all units will enact their orders simultaneously, meaning that attempting to second-guess and outmaneuver this enemy becomes the focus of the game. This all sounds very fascinating and strategic in theory, but in practice it's confusing and easy to miscalculate, often resulting in frustration when ingenious and daring plans fail spectacularly because you misjudged the altitude a bit. The game also lacks visual flair and feedback, meaning that the brutal impact we'd expect from the grim darkness of the far future is sadly missing. Aeronautica Imperialis was a cool idea that translated into a forgettable and often boring experience. You might have fun commanding your squadron of aerial war machines, but it'll probably be fleet-ing. God, we're on a roll, aren't we? Number 40. Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. 2011. Up until this point in 40k gaming history, tie-in titles tended to be strategic, turn-based affairs that reflected the tabletop game. 2011, however, spawned a couple of 40k games with a more action-orientated gameplay style. One was Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, which we'll talk about later, and the other was Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team, a top-down shooter with twin-stick controls, and a game that existed solely to promote its aforementioned bigger brother. Offering would-be intergalactic super-soldiers the chance to play as Space Marines of the Blood Angels chapter, after Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team was released on PS3, 360, and PC and told the story of the Apostles of Sanguinius' attempt to stop the Orc and Tyranid forces from causing a ruckus in the galaxy. Another title that sounds quite good, Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team was beset with a number of issues that held it back from being a game that's easy to recommend. Reviewers pointed out shallow gameplay, cheap difficulty, and frustrating checkpoint placement, and many labelled the game as boring, which is something that exploding hordes of violent space yobs and quivering insectoid horrors should never be. Perhaps the biggest gripe, however, was the fact that the game was clearly designed for multiplayer gaming, yet doesn't feature any form of online multiplayer. Released well into the era of online play, this omission was unforgivable and resulted in Kill Team becoming just another forgotten relic of the Imperium. Number 39. Talisman The Horus Heresy PC 2016 we're back with old Horus again, and this time the heretical one is putting his cursed name to a board game adaptation. Talisman The Horus Heresy is tough to rank, because there's nothing terribly wrong with it, but it doesn't really offer much either. It's a 40k, or 30k considering we're back in heresy times, reskin of a digital version of the board game Talisman, and that's basically all there is to it. If you're familiar with the board game and have enjoyed it in the past and have an interest in 40k lore, then you might enjoy this adaptation. The base game gives players access to nine space marine legions, some loyal, some traitorous, and tasks them
them with building armies, recruiting armadas and amassing strength with the goal of turning the tide in the battle for Terra. It captures one of the most epic and turbulent times in the 40k timeline and adequately replicates the gameplay of the board game, but that's about it. There were some complaints leveled at the game, however, that have caused us to drop it down our list a bit. Many players reported a harsh learning curve thanks to inadequate tutorials, some pointed out terrible AI and others lamented a boring endgame. The title was also called out for removing characters and selling them as DLC, which is always something that leaves a sour taste in our mouth. Alas, Talisman the Horus Heresy is not actually available to purchase anymore, so the whole thing is moot anyway. Right, what's next? I hope it's not another board game reskinned with 40k imagery. God, can you imagine? Number 38. Warhammer 40,000 Regicide PC 2015 Oh, hello there, Space Marine Chess! Indeed, developed by Hammerfall Publishing, Warhammer 40,000 Regicide is what happens when the pawns, rooks, and knights of chess are replaced with tactical marines, terminators, and librarians, which are much cooler than they sound, I promise. The game features two gameplay modes. Regicide, which is inspired by chess but adds factors like equipment, initiative points, and objectives rather than capturing the king, and Classic, which is basically reskinned chess. The Regicide mode is a welcome addition and definitely gives the game more of a reason to exist, but some reviewers did lament the fact that the additional rules added an element of luck to the game that worked against the pure strategy of its inspiration. As for Classic mode, it's literally 40k chess, which is something you could easily replicate with a chessboard and the appropriate number of Space Marine and Orc models, or adequate proxies thereof, meaning that the only unique selling point that Classic mode really has going for it are the frequent gory death animations that occur when one game piece takes another, and even these get extremely repetitive. At the end of the day, then, if you've ever felt that the only thing that the classic and respected board game of chess was really missing was a hefty dose of gratuitous dismemberment, then this is the 40k spin-off for you. The rest of us could probably find something a bit more interesting to pass the time with, though. Number 37. Necromunda Underhive Wars. PC, PS4, and Xbox One. 2020. Necromunda is a Warhammer 40,000 spin-off set in the depths of a colossal hive city in which various armed gangs battle for riches and territory in a lawless and brutal environment. It's a flipping cool setting and provides an opportunity for tabletop players to collect and paint a miniature gang that develops and evolves over the course of a campaign. Said gang will acquire its own personality and history as missions are won or failed, new recruits are added and valued gang members are killed or injured. Transferring the mechanics of Necromunda into video game form seemed like a no brainer and easy to win, but Necromunda Underhive Wars developers Rogue Factor fiddled too much and ended up with a title that disappointed fans of the tabletop game and failed to capture the interest of those who weren't already invested. While Necromunda Underhive Wars has some nice map design, the majority of players felt that the mix of turn-based strategy and third-person shooter gameplay styles simply didn't work. The shooting gameplay lacks impact and any kind of visceral reward for skillful play thanks to the fact that units are still hitting or missing based on behind-the-scenes dice rolling and the board game style strategy element suffers from the limitations of the third person viewpoint. The end result is a game that more or less looks the part, but flounders due to a mismatch of gameplay styles that simply don't work well together. We hoped that it would be Escher-lunt, but unfortunately it was found to be delacking. <laughs> uh, sorry. Number 36. Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior. PC and PS2. 2003. Released on the PS2 and PC in 2003, Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior represents the first time the 40k IP strayed from the strategy genre when it came to video game adaptations. It also marks a rare occasion when the main character of a Warhammer 40k game was not a space marine or some other agent of the Imperium, as players take on the role of a Fire Warrior of the Tau Empire, a multi-species alien faction dedicated to expanding in the name of the greater good. When the game was released, the Tau was still a relatively new addition to the tabletop universe, and the Fire Warrior developers Kuju Entertainment had the opportunity to surf the wave of excitement brought by this new and expanding empire. It did get certain things right. An FPS set in the Warhammer 40k universe was a breath of fresh air from all the strategy fare, and the game had an interesting premise concerning a Tau Fire Warrior battling an Imperium faction suspected of chaos corruption before eventually coming face to face with actual chaos forces in the form of word bearers traitor marines and their demon allies. Alas, Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior failed to live up to any of this promise, with reviewers and paying customers alike agreeing that the game lacked polish and suffered from lacklustre combat, coming across as a mediocre shooter at best. Still, surely it would only be a matter of time before 40k fans got a great first-person shooter, right? Guys? Number 35. Adeptus Titanicus Dominus PC 
2021. Some of the most feared weapons of war in the particularly war-torn Warhammer 40,000 universe are the Titans. Games Workshop's Titan Legions game deals specifically with these enormous mechanized war platforms and is part of the epic Warhammer 40,000 spin-off system in which larger-scale Warhammer 40,000 battles are presented using adorably tiny miniatures. Aww. Adeptus Titanicus Dominus takes inspiration from Titan Legions and presents this epic scale combat in tactical turn-based form. The Titans depicted in Adeptus Titanicus Dominus dwarf the already massive Imperial Knights previously seen in Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade. Basically walking cathedrals toting terrifying amounts of weaponry, these colossal ordinances are also known very appropriately as God Machines as they are seen as the physical embodiments of the machine god of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Adeptus Titanicus Dominus, despite being a serviceable tactics em up, completely fails to capture the terrifying majesty and awesome destructive power of these war machines and instead provides a somewhat bland and very dated experience that lacks visual flair and suffers from immersion-breaking glitches. Like units firing after they've already been destroyed, or titans getting stuck on terrain. Silly game, titans don't get stuck on terrain, they smash through it. The game is currently unavailable to buy from the Steam store, and despite some reviewers describing a positive experience outside of the bugs, ropiness and lack of content, it's unlikely that Adeptus Titanicus Dominus is going to be missed. You'll just have to get your skyscraper dwarfing god machines clashing and blasted futuristic hellscapes fix elsewhere, I'm afraid. Number 34. Space Hulk, Deathwing, PC and PS4, 2016. One of the earliest Warhammer 40,000 spin-off games, Space Hulk focuses on a squad of space marines as they board and investigate the titular Space Hulks. If you're picturing an angry, muscle-bound green guy in space, then you're well off the mark as a Space Hulk is actually a gigantic and ancient derelict craft that is found drifting through the void. These things are seen as a danger to mankind as they are often infested with insidious gene-stealers or bands of war-loving orcs. Uh, you know, I suppose angry, muscle-bound green guy wasn't as far off the mark as I thought, actually. Anyway, this spin-off game proved ripe for conversion into video game form, and 2016's Space Hulk Deathwing took an FPS approach to the traditionally turn-based affair. Unfortunately, while the very premise of Space Hulk lends itself nicely to a corridor shooter, Space Hulk Deathwing is a very limited example of one. A lackluster story, poor AI, muddled mechanics, and broken multiplayer all get in the way of those fleeting moments where clanking around in Terminator armor dismembering alien scum is as fun and engaging as it should be. Huge potential, this one, but it just didn't translate to a good experience. With all that said, we would like to applaud Space Hulk Deathwing for absolutely nailing the visuals and atmosphere of the 40k universe. The ambiance and personality of the grim darkness of the far future has been captured here perhaps better than in any other video game on this list, and that is certainly something to be celebrated. Peter? Number 33. Necromunda Hired Gun – PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series 2021. We're going back to the hive world of Necromunda now for another Warhammer 40k FPS that failed to live up to its potential. Developed by Streum on Studio, the same studio responsible for Space Hulk Deathwing, Necromunda Hired Gun suffered from many of the same problems. Moving away from Deathwing's chunky Space Marine protagonist, Necromunda Hired Gun instead puts players in the shoes of a mercenary who opposes a powerful underworld gang known as the Silver Talon. Borrowing gameplay elements from the recent Doom games like health replenishing melee executions, and from more movement based shooters with its grappling hook and wall running, Necromunda Hired Gun tries to be a fast paced all action thrill ride, but there are numerous factors that halt the flow and stifle the fun. Reviewers pointed out finicky controls, a confusing and uninteresting plot, poor AI, and numerous bugs as reasons to pick some other shooter over this one. At the end of the day, Things like missing HUD, enemies phasing through walls, players sliding around and teleporting during melee animations, and good old fashioned crashing are always going to break the immersion. It's a shame, because Necromunda Hired Gun does a great job of capturing the gritty and unforgiving yet wild and over the top atmosphere of the Necromundan Hive cities, proving once again that Streum on Studio really know how to capture a universe. If they could only nail the gameplay to the same level, we might have some all-time greats on our hands. Number 32. Warhammer 40,000 Squad Command – DS and PSP 2007 
Right, we've had a brief FPS interlude, and now it's time to get tactical again with Warhammer 40,000 Squad Command. This turn-based handheld affair was developed by Ubisoft Red Links and released on the PSP and DS, marking it as the first handheld Warhammer 40k experience, unless you count the aforementioned N-Gage games, but we already told you what the Emperor thinks of those, so stop talking about them unless you want to be branded a heretic. Warhammer 40,000 Squad Command offers single and multiplayer gameplay in which squads of loyal space marines face off against their chaotic former compatriots on a beleaguered Imperial planet. It. The turn-based gameplay is intended to mimic its tabletop inspiration, and units make use of action points to blast their enemies and perform various battlefield operations. While all the ingredients are there for an interesting and gratifying handheld experience, Warhammer 40,000's Squad Command failed to achieve much beyond uninspired averageness. Reviewers cited awkward controls, useless camera modes, and needlessly difficult mechanics as reasons to approach this one with caution. The story was also deemed as more or less non-existent, although the CG cutscenes did at least offer some punch. Overall though, Warhammer 40,000's Squad Command was something of a missed opportunity, as it could have been a great way to carry your Space Marines around with you in your pocket without breaking them or getting stabbed in the thigh by little plastic chainsaws. What a shame. Number 31, Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, PC, 2014. Armageddon, like Necromunda, is actually an Imperial Hive world, but the biblical meaning, a final apocalyptic battle between good and evil, is something that happens daily in the 40k universe. The game, known as Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, is a hex-based strategy game published by Slytherin Software, who are also responsible for the World War II-based Panzer Corps game. Why do we bring this up? Well, because the Panzer Corps titles are also hex-based strategy games, and are markedly similar to Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon. Pitting the armies of the Imperium against the endless hordes of Orc invaders, Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon offers a deep and complex tactical experience for those of the strategic mindset, and if you're willing to put the time in, you'll find that the game throws up plenty of tough strategic decisions to keep your tactical servos whirring. It does, however, lack the depth of Panzer Corps, and suffers from some other issues too. Obscure mechanics, a lack of balance, and a failure to fully explain its gameplay to newcomers are all things to consider before taking the plunge, and a general lack of visual and audio flair add to a somewhat static and stodgy experience. If you like to imagine yourself thoughtfully stroking your chin while standing over a map strewn with figures and data, then this might be the game for you. But if you'd rather witness the carnage from a slightly more cinematic perspective, then your best strategy would be to look elsewhere. Number 30, The Horus Heresy, Battle of Talan, PC, 2017. If you don't mind, we're going to keep things hexy for a bit, as the Horus Heresy, Battle for Talan, is another hex-based strategy title. This one is developed by, well, Hex War Games, actually, a spot of nominative determinism there, and once again it takes things back a few thousand years to the time of Horus and his treacherous ways. Should we have called this list every Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer 30,000 video game ranked from worst to best? No, that's too many numbers. 40,000 is enough, and 70,000 would just be daft. Despite coming from a different developer and possessing a somewhat different graphical style, the Horus Heresy Battle of Talan offers a similar brand of chin-scratching hex-based gameplay to Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, but uses the first and most devastating civil war in Imperial history as its backdrop. Unfortunately, it also has its problems, but where Armageddon was overly stuffy and complex at times, the Horus Heresy Battle of Talan comes across as a little basic compared to its hex-based peers. It also has some AI issues and some balance problems, especially when playing as the Traitor Legions, but if you play as Chaos, then expect Chaos, that's what I say. Silliness aside, the Horus Heresy Battle of Talan doesn't really offer anything that Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon can't offer in greater depth and with more finesse, but it is a hell of a lot cheaper, so you'll be a bit less disappointed when you quickly get bored of it. Number 29, Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade, PC, 2016. 
A posthumous entry now, as online multiplayer shooter Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade is no longer with us. Developed by Behaviour Interactive, the game was released only for the PC and allowed players to choose from a number of classes and engage in competitive third-person online battles. For anyone wondering, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One ports were planned, but were ultimately cancelled. Players could choose from Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Orcs, and Eldar, and then from the various factions within each race before taking to arena-like battlefields and engaging in frantic combat. While the game was alive, it was buggy, janky, and hilariously unbalanced, but nevertheless, there are numerous historical tales of players embracing the brokenness and just having a heck of a lot of fun. The Steam reviews are still filled with fans lamenting the loss of the game, saying how much they miss it, and telling old combat stories. The review scores are firmly rooted in mixed territory, but it seems that this was a game that truly touched a lot of people's hearts. Still, all of this is kind of irrelevant now, as the Eternal Crusade proved to be decidedly uneternal when the developers pulled the plug on the game's servers on the 10th of September 2021. The flags on the Imperial Palace must have been flying at half-mast that day. Number 28. Battlefleet Gothic Armada PC 2016 Alright, we've purged the Xenos on foot, we've blown them out of the air, and annihilated heretics from the pilot seat of gigantic war machines. Now at last, it's time to pummel the enemies of the Imperium in space, where no one can hear their heretical screams. Another video game based on one of Warhammer 40,000's numerous tabletop spin-offs, Battlefleet Gothic Armada is a real-time tactical space fleet combat game based on a gigantic conflict in the Gothic system. Players are put in command of starships belonging to the various races of the 40k universe, with Imperial and Space Marine fleets alongside Chaos, Eldar, Orc, and Tau representation. The game presents these space battles on inspiring galactic backdrops, and features accurate representations of Games Workshop's iconic warship designs doing battle with star cannons, boarding torpedoes, and other such futuristic weaponry. The ships are customizable, and for those with a penchant for tactical space combat, there is a wealth of strategic content to enjoy. However, Battlefleet Gothic Armada is not without its faults that drag it down the list a bit. Excessive microscopic details that serve only to bog down the gameplay have been called into question, and that old interstellar anomaly known as balancing issues has made an ominous appearance on Battlefleet Gothic Armada's radar. Still, we're in the realms of relatively decent games now, and overall, the idea of Imperial starships clashing with the Xenos fleets in the vast nothingness of space was a hit with 40k fans. Number 27. Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide PC 2022 One of the more recent games on our list, Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide is heavily inspired by multiplayer-only action survival game Warhammer End Times Vermintide, which is based on the Warhammer Fantasy tabletop games. After Vermintide made a decent name for itself in the cooperative multiplayer circles, putting various human, elf, and dwarf heroes against constant swarms of mer murderous rat men, developer Fat Shark thought that they'd try their luck in the 41st millennium. And if we were basing these ratings on gameplay alone, Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide would find itself much higher on this list. Unfortunately though, there are certain other factors that have to be considered. The backdrop of the game concerns a number of inquisitorial agents investigating a hive city suspected of harboring the Taint of Chaos, and sees four players cooperate to fend off waves of enemies throughout various locations in the compromised city. The story is a good one too, as it was penned by the renowned 40k novel writer Dan Abnett, who knows how to spin a good sci-fi yarn. It also features some great presentation and thrilling fast-paced combat. So what's wrong with it then? Well, alas, the game lacks content, stability, and polish in its current state, and its Steam review average reflects this adequately. No one summed it up quite so eloquently as Rock Paper Shotgun, however, who described it as, quote, a fantastic FPS ruined by a rubbish MMO. Oh, I hate it when acronyms don't get on. 
Number 26. Warhammer 40,000 Rights of War, PC, 1999. Warhammer 40,000 Rights of War is one of the earliest 40k video game adaptations, and provides an interesting glance back into the tabletop game's more colourful and cartoony past. It's also based on a World War II strategy game, that being Panzer General II, but contains far more in the way of pointy ears, spirit stones, and avatars of ancient murder gods. In the campaign, players command the majestic and deadly forces of the Eldar, now known as the Eldari, who are attempting to reclaim one of their ancient worlds from Imperial forces, and later on those ravenous rascals the Tyranids show up. The game also offers a skirmish mode and a multiplayer mode where all three races are available to command. Another turn-based strategy game with an abundance of hexagons on screen, Rites of War offers similar tactical gameplay to other hex-based 40k titles, only with added glare from that late 90s paint job. Reviewers were very split on the quality, with some praising an engrossing campaign and an agreeably bold art style and interface, while others complained of a lack of polish, poor AI, and obnoxious difficulty. Most who played the game back in the day remember it fondly, though this may be a case of them looking back with rose-tinted spectacles. To be fair though, considering the somewhat vivid armour worn by 90s Eldar, we can't blame them for needing some kind of eye protection. Number 25. Space Hulk Tactics, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, 2018. There have been a number of tactical adaptations of Game Workshop's Space Hulk board game over the years, and Space Hulk Tactics is, at the time of recording, the most recent. It presents the Space Marine on Gene Stealer action from a top-down perspective, and has a decent amount of content to offer, including multiple Space Marine chapters to play as, and even a Gene Stealer campaign. In the tabletop game, the aforementioned gigantic amalgamations of floating space junk known as Space Hulks are split into a grid so that players can move their units around, encountering the enemy and dealing with various events as the game progresses. Space Hulk Tactics offers the same experience in digital form, mixing turn-based strategy with limited deck-building elements, as players can equip various cards to their units, granting desirable effects. So, if the board game is good, and this game is basically a digital version of the board game, why isn't it higher up the list? Well, unfortunately, it was severely hampered by a number of issues that will make you want to clear the dining table and invite some friends over for a night of tabletop space hulking, rather than blasting roaming gene stealers online. The added gene stealer campaign and card mechanics, and some very authentic visual design are all factors that will no doubt delight its target audience, but problems like a confusing interface, questionable AI, and a lack of polish mean that while players will definitely come out the other side satisfyingly covered in gene stealer goo, they'll probably still feel a little empty inside as well. Number 24. Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, PC, 2019. It's time to head back into the void again, as the next game on our list is Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, a sequel that's almost universally seen as an improvement on its predecessor. The visuals are somehow more impressive, with those galaxyscapes having even more dizzying depth to them, resulting in Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 being quite the looker. But what else has it got to offer? Well, more board game inspired tactical space battles, of course, but this time all 12 factions from the tabletop are present, including the Forces of Chaos, three varieties of Imperial Fleet, three separate Eldari factions, and multiple flavours of miscellaneous Xenos. The sequel offers bigger battles, refined gameplay, and more customization options, so that fleet commanders can personalize their frigates, cruisers, and dreadnoughts to their heart's content. However, many claim that this souped-up sequel still failed to offer the interstellar firefight experience it promised, with complaints of poor balancing and unwieldy user interfaces rearing their ugly heads. The twelve factions were obviously a welcome addition, but this unit variety doesn't mean all that much when battles still manage to feel repetitive no matter whose squadron of heavily armed starships you're controlling. At the end of the day, Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 is a tough one to fairly assess, since there are as many observers who lauded it as a spectacle as there are those who labelled it as decidedly humdrum. As such, we've stuck it more or less in the middle of the list. That's fair, right? 
Number 23. Space Hulk, Amiga and PC, 1993. As only the second Warhammer 40,000 video game ever, and the first to be focused on the Space Hulk spin-off board game, 1993's Space Hulk, developed by Electronic Arts, is quite the revered veteran. The grid-based gameplay is presented in charming 2D style, with impressive for the time first-person sections where brave space marines explore the dark halls of derelict vessels, encountering the hated Xenos in all their pixelated glory. Being the classic Space Hulk experience, Space Hulk 93 features the Dark Angel Space Marine chapter facing off against the infamous Gene Stealer enemy, and is all the more nostalgic and authentic for it. And this may seem like an entry based purely on sentimentality, but Space Hulk 93 offered an incredibly atmospheric experience for its time, and handled the transition of the board game's mechanics with finesse. The limited visuals even added a sense of dread and intrigue to the process of gradual exploration, and encountering threatening blips on the radar always sent a shiver up the spine. The Gene Stealers came across as truly terrifying, just like their clear inspiration, the Xenomorphs from the Alien movie franchise, and many a strategy gamer from 1993 knew that seeing one of those purple bugs up close meant near certain death for your precious Astartes. Still, many players found that Space Hulk 93 was just too difficult, and that attempting to control your entire squad at the same time as being assailed by gene stealers from all directions made for a stressful and frustrating experience. Pretty darn good for a first try, though. Number 22. Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels 3DO, PC, PS1, and Saturn, 1995. Two years after their first crack of the Space Hulk whip, Electronic Arts tried again with the more advanced Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels. Taking advantage of the technological strides the industry was making at the time, this follow-up provided more impressive 3D environments, allowing players to control their squad of marines directly in first-person mode or via the appropriately sci-fi looking map screen. The Blood Angels chapter take the leading role this time, with players controlling a squad of elite Blood Angels Terminators as they clank through the derelict spaceship, disturbing all the hibernating gene stealers. These fellows definitely wake up cranky, and one of the classic Warhammer 40,000 face offs ensues. Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels was seen as an improvement over its 1993 predecessor in nearly every way, but it still split reviewers who were as likely to to praise the game's amazing atmosphere and tactical gameplay as they were to lambast its confusing mechanics and sluggish pace. In the end, it would appear that Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels is one of those games that had plenty to offer, but only if you were willing to learn the mechanics and hike up that steep learning curve. There was a great experience in there, but it was about as accessible as a 3 inch thick adamantium bulkhead with multiple threatening radar blips on the other side. And by that I mean, if you knew how to use your squad of Terminators properly, it was actually quite accessible. Number 21. Space Hulk. PC, PS3, PS4, Wii U, and Vita. 2013. After an 18 year hiatus following Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels, the series came back with a bang in 2013. This is obviously, again, not counting the Engage Space Hulk game, but we've already told you to stop bringing that thing up. Seriously, agents of the Inquisition are everywhere. Keep quiet. Anyway, Space Hulk 2013 was more of a straight port of the board game compared to its FPS flavored predecessors, offering a faithful rendition of the tabletop rules from a top down viewpoint. That doesn't mean it completely loses the atmosphere, though, as the passageways, corridors, and crevices all look suitably dreary and techy from a bird's eye view. Also, the the first person video feeds in the corner of the screen add that required dose of aliens inspired atmosphere for a true Space Hulk experience. With its neat visuals and faithful recreation of the board game's mechanics, Space Hulk 2013 was definitely something of a crowd pleaser for 40k fans. However, certain board game mechanics didn't necessarily translate well to the video game world, and the clandestine dice rolling could cause newcomers to become frustrated when their elite of the elite Space Marine Terminators repeatedly miss at point-blank range. 
Space Hulk 2013 was far more accessible than its 90s predecessors, but it could have done a bit more to endear itself to fans. It's also currently unavailable to buy regardless, but luckily there is still one more Space Hulk adaptation that we haven't spoken about yet. Stay tuned, Space Hulk fans. Number 20. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister PC and Oculus 2022 it's time to move away from those chunky space marine boys now and step into the boots of 40k's resident white-haired warrior women. The Adepta Sororitas is an all-female wing of the Imperial Church, and the Sisters of Battle are their military. They basically purge the galaxy of heretics, mutants, and aliens in a similar fashion to their space marine brothers, but with a more feminine touch. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister, which was developed solely for VR, aims to present as immersive an experience as possible. Containing a galaxy-spanning campaign that plunges the player headfirst into a clash between the Adepta Sororitas and the Forces of Chaos, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister's goal is to absorb players directly into the 41st millennium and give them a smattering of traitor space marines and scary demons to smash while they're there. The game gets a lot right, and interacting with colossal Black Templar space marines, mooching around gloomy tech shrines, and getting poked by skull-emblazoned needle-armed bioscanners all feels very authentic. Unfortunately, the combat is generally far less genuine, with the iconic Bolt Gun, a shockingly powerful automatic weapon that rapid-fires miniature rocket-propelled grenades, feeling unforgivably weak and failing to quickly dispatch even lightly armoured Chaos Cultists. For this heresy alone, it fails to climb higher on our list, but it is otherwise a capable and immersive 40k experience, and the best way of getting truly up close and personal with the universe without getting primer, plastic glue, and static grass all stuck under your fingernails. Isn't that right, Ben? Ben? Number 19. Space Crusade. Amiga, Amstrad, CPC, Atari ST, Commodore 64, PC, and ZX Spectrum. 1992. Call us sentimental, but it just felt right to give the very first Warhammer 40,000 video game adaptation a decent ranking on our list. However, it's not just nostalgia and a respect for those that came before us that got it here, as Space Crusade was a solid digital debut too. The Space Crusade board game used many of the concepts from Space Hulk, but streamlined things a little, and this simplified tabletop option was chosen for Games Workshop's first foray into the video game world. The simplified take on Space Hulk resulted in an experience with less tactical depth but with a faster pace, and this translated well through its various home computer releases. The limited visuals did a good job of representing the sprawling complexes the Space Marines were exploring and the controls were entirely adequate to allow for thoughtful turn-based squad control. The versions of the game that released on the more advanced platforms also featured isometric sections for some added cinematic appeal, and unlike Space Hulk, which only offered gene-stealer enemies for the player to encounter, Space Crusade brought some Orc and Chaos forces along for the ride too. It's definitely not going to hold up against modern tactical combat games, but for the time it offered an ample board game equivalent experience with some cool effects and nice visual touches that raised it above basic adaptation status, opening the gigantic, hissing bulkhead door for many more of its ilk. A holy relic indeed. Number 18. Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters PC 2022 you see, you can tell Games Workshop are super serious about their demons because they spell it with an A. Somehow it just makes them seem all the more occult, you know what I mean? The Grey Knights in Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters are super serious about demons too. Super serious about putting them to the sword and sending them back to the swirling hell dimension of the warp, that is. These Grey Knights are a secretive and incredibly elite Space Marine chapter tasked specifically with the elimination of all things demonic, and they are the stars of Complex Games 2022 turn based tactics title in which they battle demonic minions aplenty. It's a thankless task, but Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters does its best to ensure that players are having fun throughout. Borrowing quite liberally from the XCOM series, it gets a lot right and offers a wealth of strategic options, with the addition of terrain effects like destructible cover and flammable areas adding nice tactical touches. Not everything is rosy though, with some overly complicated skill trees and interface issues occasionally marring the experience, with the abundance of battlefield
Battlefield visual effects sometimes making it difficult to see what's going on. It is 40k XCOM, but XCOM does XCOM better, meaning only 40k heads will find value here that they can't find elsewhere. It's also a reboot of a classic 40k game from the olden days, making it seem even more derivative. Hang on, have we talked about that game yet? Number 17. Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate PC 1998 Ah, there it is. Released in 1998 and developed by Random Games, Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate was the first game to be a direct adaptation of Warhammer 40,000 as a whole, rather than a port of one of its spin-offs. This time it was the classic vanilla Space Marine chapter, the Ultramarines, that took centre stage and they were up against the word bearers, traitor marines and their demonic allies. The game was heavily influenced by the developer's previous title, Soldiers at War, a World War II turn-based tactics title, and offers similar gameplay. Observers noted a marked improvement, however, pointing out that Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate boasted a much better user interface, larger maps and more streamlined gameplay compared to its progenitor. As such, Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate proved to be an immersive, strategic experience that was a great representation of the tabletop game at the time, with a mission randomizer and editable scenarios that added plenty of longevity. The lack of a Chaos campaign was seen as a bit of a letdown, though, and a few mild complaints were leveled at the sound quality, but these slight hiccups weren't enough to stop this turn-based strategy game from being a hit. Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate sounded quite decent too, with the soundtrack often cited as one of the game's main strengths. Sometimes the final ingredient needed for a compelling strategic warfare experience is that suitably rousing soundtrack and Chaos Gate delivered in epic fashion. Number 16. Final Liberation Warhammer Epic 40,000 PC 1997 our next game is epic in a very different way, as Final Liberation Warhammer Epic 40,000 is based on the previously cited tabletop game spin-off Epic, in which far smaller scale miniatures are used to represent much larger armies clashing in planet-shaking warfare. Pitting the immovable might of the Imperium against the unstoppable orcish hordes, Final Liberation features an abundance of titans, gargants, and other such military monstrosities that are rarely seen in the standard scale games. He's starting to understand why they call it Epic. Having said all that, Final Liberation isn't exactly what you'd call action-packed, being a turn-based hex strategy game from the late 90s. The gameplay once again takes its cues from its tabletop origins, with players deciding the actions of each of their units in turn before sitting back and watching the AI-controlled opponent make a mess of their best-laid plans. The goal of all of this tactical manoeuvring is to capture territory in the battle for the planet Volistad, with available territories determining how effective players can repair and replace units between battles. Despite its archaic appearance, Final Liberation Warhammer Epic 40,000 is seen as something of a gem by those in the know, and at the time only minimal complaints were directed at its gameplay with the only aspect of the game that received any real criticism being the somewhat flat and lifeless visuals. We don't think it looks so bad though, you know, for an oldie. Number 15. Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War PC 2018 the last of the hex-based Slytherine-published 40k games, Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War has more in common with Civilization than it does with Panzer Corps, looking and playing like a 4x game where options of diplomacy are thrown out of the window and the only option for expansion is open war. Definitely on brand, then. Developed by Proxy Studios, Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War gives players the opportunity to choose between Imperial Guard, Space Marine, Orc, or Necron forces and then use the unique units and tactics that each faction can muster in a bid for total domination. Each race has its own campaign and a hot seat multiplayer mode is added for competitive generals, making the game a go-to for 40k fans with a mind for grand strategy and civilization fans who don't have time for things like peaceful trade and mutually beneficial agreements. Agreements. As far as hex-based 40k games go, it's probably the best one out there despite some criticisms levelled at its pace, tutorials and complexity, and if your Warhammer 40,000 strategy games absolutely have to have hexagonal grids in them, then this is probably your best modern option. Having said that, the game's Steam average has taken a hit thanks to some highly priced DLC that rubbed people up the wrong way, so if you want the complete experience you can expect to be parting with quite a lot of pocket money, making it one expensive hobby. Again. Definitely on brand, then. Number 14. Legacy of Dawn, Herald of Oblivion, PC, 2015. Right, take a seat in the Imperial Library, put your reading visor on and pick up a data slate, because Legacy of Dawn, Herald of Oblivion is one of those games that wants you to read a lot. 
Boo! Basically a digital version of a choose-your-own-adventure game book, Legacy of Dawn Herald of Oblivion offered a deep and branching storyline concerning a space marine of the Imperial Fists chapter trapped on the extremely ominously named Herald of Oblivion Space Hulk. The bad news is that said space marine is the only survivor of his squad, but the good news is he's equipped with Terminator armor and some of the most devastating weaponry that a pumped-up eight-foot-tall super soldier could possibly carry. Sounds like a recipe for adventure to me. The game is presented in a very thematic green-on-black visual style and draws you in with well-written accounts of the beleaguered Space Marines' tribulations on the dark and dreary ship. While short, it offered multiple routes and legitimate player choices as well as a simple combat system based on digital dice rolls. When it comes down to it, Legacy of Dawn Herald of Oblivion is not the kind of thing that everyone is going to like, but if you're the sort of person who enjoys this style of experience, then by all accounts this is a really good example of said thing. So. 14th place seems fair, right? It's not available to purchase anymore anyway, so consider this a legacy entry. Because, you know, it that's in the name as well. Number 13. Warhammer 40,000 Death Watch. PC and PS4. 2015. We haven't seen a game that started out on mobile devices for a while, and that's because most of them are crap. Warhammer 40,000 Death Watch, however, mostly bucked the trend of mobile ports not translating well to other platforms and offered a fun and deep strategic experience with a meaty campaign to get stuck into. The story concerned a squad of Death Watch space marines facing off against the ever-growing threat of a Tyranid invasion, and the action played out in turn-based tactical style, with a card-drawing mechanic that granted additional units and gear, adding a bit of random chance to the proceedings. The graphics were enhanced greatly from its mobile origins, but it still didn't look as polished as PC and PS4 players would likely have expected, and some players did decry the occasional frustrating mechanic like units losing XP if you quit to the main menu, but the positives generally outweigh the negatives. The quick-fire missions meant that players could safely load it up even if they didn't have hours of game time to set aside, and the element of chance when it came to gear and squad members meant that missions needed to be approached differently on repeated playthroughs. Warhammer 40,000 Death Watch's mobile origins were plain to see, but if you could look past all that, there was a deep and replayable experience on offer. Shame then, it's another one that's unavailable to purchase. Games Workshop really like taking their licenses away, don't they? Number 12. Warhammer 40,000 Sanctus Reach PC 2017 Another turn-based strategy title, another offering from Slytherine Software. Warhammer 40,000 Sanctus Reach does away with all those complicated hexagons and replaces them with good, old-fashioned squares. The game pits the implacable Orc hordes against the Space Marines of the Space Wolves chapter in a truly savage confrontation that will decide the fate of the Sanctus Reach region of space, where world after world has fallen to the billion-strong Orc menace. The gameplay is tactical in nature, once again reminiscent of the XCOM series, but with whole armies being controlled rather than small squads of elite specialists. It received a lukewarm reception from critics, with reviewers claiming that the game was somewhat basic, lacked content, and that the presentation left much to be desired. The player reception has been far more positive, however, and Sanctus Reach is seen by many as an excellent representation of the feel of the tabletop game. Meaningful tactical choices are plenty, an ample variety of units with different battlefield roles, a deep experience system, and the ability to tailor your forces before each battle are all all factors that add up to a satisfying tabletop adjacent experience, and two lengthy campaigns ensure plenty of longevity. Despite its somewhat bare bones appearance and lack of 40k flair, Warhammer 40,000 Sanctus Reach has quietly become a favourite for fans of turn based combat, and specifically those who like their Space Marines zealously religious and their Xenos spread into a fine paste across the battlefield. Does that sound like you? Come on, own up. The Emperor is watching there, so own up. Now, number 11. Warhammer 40,000 DACA Squadron, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, 2020. Right, now we're talking. It's about time the undisputed best faction in Warhammer 40,000 took centre stage. Sorry, the, the biases of our green skin loving writer are showing through here. We'll try to keep this impartial. It won't work, though. He's just that excited about orcs. You know how it is. Warhammer 40,000 DACA Squadron, the word DACA being a representation of the sound of automatic weaponry, is an airborne action game in which players take on the role of a crack orc pilot in aerial battles on various planets. In true orky fashion, the game doesn't 
concern itself too much with realistic flying physics and instead offers flashy dogfighting and explosive combat that is easy to get to grips with but tough to master. When not blasting Necrons, Imperials and, of course, other Orcs, players will be able to spend accumulated Teef, which Orcs use as currency, to upgrade their ramshackle flying machines and are then able to transfer these craft into multiplayer deathmatch modes to truly test their Orky piloting skills. While not completely universally adored, Warhammer 40,000 Dakar Squadron received a thoroughly positive reception from fans who pointed out great controls, great visuals, extensive customization, and good orc voice acting as reasons to strap into the pilot seat, with only occasional accusations of too much battlefield debris to crash into and constant repetitive radio chatter bringing things down a little. At the end of the day, if you're not enjoying Warhammer 40,000 Dakar Squadron for some reason, then you probably just need more Dakar. More Dakar fixes everything. It is the orc way, or so I'm told. Number 10. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3 PC 2017 we start off our top 10 with the third entry into what is probably the most well-known Warhammer 40,000 strategy game series. With Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3, developers Relic decided to drastically evolve the series that had brought them so much success, and this decision, while commendable, probably ended the franchise. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3 continued the story of the enigmatic Blood Raven Space Marine chapter as they descended upon a planet thought to hold a catastrophic weapon only to find Orc and Eldar forces standing in their way. Reviewers were generally very positive about the game and said that it did a great job of capturing the feel of the 40k universe and successfully melded the traditional real-time strategy gameplay of its predecessors with almost MOBA-like combat mechanics. Production values were high, voice acting was on point, and the Space Marine, Orc, and Eldar forces on offer presented satisfyingly distinct and balanced tactical options. The game attempted to combine the large-scale battles of the original Dawn of War with the more squad-level focus of the second title and did a good job of it, but Dawn of War 3 took a verbal kicking from players who didn't like the story and felt that, compared to its predecessors, Dawn of War 3 had been dumbed down. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3 absolutely is a really good game, but it's not really Dawn of War, and in the eyes of the most zealous franchise acolytes, this snub was a practically heretical sin. Number 9. Warhammer 40,000 Shooters Blood and Teeth PC, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series 2022. Right, back to the real heroes of the 41st millennium again. This next title, Rogue Side's Warhammer 40,000 Shooters Blood and Teeth, presents the glorious green skins in 2D side-scrolling run-and-gun platforming action, and is about as destructive and anarchic as it sounds. Despite Imperial and Gene Stealer enemies showing up throughout the campaign, the main conflict in Warhammer 40,000 Shooters Blood and Teeth is fittingly between rival Orc Warlords. The player character, a powerful Orc warrior who can be customised into multiple classes, is basically torching an entire planet so that he can retrieve his hair squig. Hmm? What? Sorry, you don't know what a hair squig is? Ah, uh, well, you're obviously not orky enough then. Offering a riotous cooperative campaign, fast-paced metal slug or contra-inspired gameplay, and an appropriately metal soundtrack, this over-the-top shooter reportedly delighted both Gork and Mork alike, with Gork appreciating its explosive shootiness and Mork appreciating its shooty explosiveness. Reviewers and consumers also praise the game, with the art style, combat mechanics, and replay value all managing to hit the target. The Switch version dropped the overall score a little thanks to some performance issues, and the brevity of the campaign was pointed out by some critics, but for sheer fun and wholesome orky goodness, Warhammer 40,000 Shooter's Blood and Teeth is hard to top. Oh, and if you're still wondering, a hair squig is a hairy squig that you wear on your head. I'm glad we could clear that up for you. Number 8. Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series 2018 it took until 2018, but Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr is the result of someone finally deciding that 40k and Diablo might be an interesting mix. This mostly successful amalgamation was developed by Neocore Games and puts players back in the very important shoes of the Imperium of Man's most powerful agents, the Inquisitors. Playable in single-player and co-op modes, Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr expands somewhat 
hard on its Diablo-inspired gameplay with a cover system and destructible environments, and a story that concerns a ghost ship that's appeared from nowhere in the Caligari sector of Imperial space. It soon becomes clear that the ship may have picked up some unwanted passengers while travelling through the warp, and a battle against the insidious forces of chaos erupts. Stomping around dark and hostile environments as an Imperial Inquisitor or other Imperial agent proves to be a rewarding experience in Inquisitor Martyr, with a captivating story, a well-balanced skill tree and progression system, an authentic atmosphere, and addictive traitor-blasting loot-finding gameplay that will compel players to keep plugging away until the end. The standalone expansion, Inquisitor Prophecy, also adds positively to the overall experience. Some bugs were reported in early reviews, but hopefully the Inquisition have rooted them out by now, meaning that Inquisitor Martyr's only real downfall in the eyes of many is its hefty price tag if you're looking for the full experience with all DLC. Still, no one ever said that service to the Empire comes without great cost. Number 7. Space Hulk Ascension – PC, PS4, and Xbox One 2014. Developed by Full Control, the same team responsible for the 2013 Space Hulk title, Space Hulk Ascension took practically everything its predecessor did and made it better, and it did this by being a bit less like the board game it's based on. As heretical as this may sound, the changes made by Full Control maintain the spirit of the tabletop while refining it for the PC and console experience. This included removing a lot of the random chance found in the board game and enabling players to upgrade their space marines using an experience system, a decision that reduced instances of fickle dice gods causing your squad of battle-hardened, tooled-up killing machines to fold like wet paper at the first sign of a Xenos. The game also made an effort to make weapons more interesting, such as offering a choice of different flamethrower templates and including an overheating mechanic for bolters, and there were also three space marine chapters to play as, each with its own campaign. The pricing of the various DLCs, as well as some nasty glitches, did result in a couple of black marks on an otherwise squeaky clean record sheet, but all in all, Space Hulk Ascension is the ultimate digital Space Hulk experience that respects the board game it came from, but still remembers that it's actually a video game. At least it was, but this one isn't available to purchase anymore either. Seriously, Games Workshop, just let us buy your games! Number 6. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine – PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 – 2011 in the very appropriately named Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, Relic Entertainment switched the focus of gameplay from the top-down strategic view of their previous work with the Dawn of War games to the more visceral combination of third-person shooter and hack-and-slash genres. The result is a bombastic hybrid adventure that's earned itself quite a following, despite being somewhat derivative of a few more successful contemporaries. Moving away from their Blood Ravens Space Marine chapter, Relic called in the aid of the reliable Ultramarines for this mission, and pitted the main character Captain Titus against Orc and Chaos forces in a campaign involving compromised Forge worlds and warp portals spewing forth terrible demonic entities. The game was praised for its genre-blending gameplay, fast-paced combat, and variety of enemies to cut down with bolter fire or slice up with chainsaws. Particularly bloodthirsty players were also delighted with the sheer amount of carnage this hero of the Imperium was capable of, and the brutality of the game's combat was seen as a gore-soaked highlight. Just like Captain Titus himself, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine wasn't without its imperfections, with some critics decrying the linearity of the campaign and some bland, uninspiring environments, but most thought that the accomplished manner in which it put players in control of an eight-foot-tall, armor-clad, righteously zealous killing machine more than made up for any minor transgressions. Let's just hope the upcoming sequel builds on this groundwork and achieves a crushing victory worthy of the Ultramarines. Number 5. Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector – PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Xbox Series – 2021 
If you've only seen the critical reception of this turn-based strategy title, you might be thinking that Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector is sitting far too high on this list. However, dig a bit deeper and you'll see that the player base has passionately embraced this Slytherine published tactical affair. Providing a fast-paced take on turn-based combat, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector attempts to replicate the scale and feel of its tabletop inspiration. However, accusations of monotonous mission design were levelled at it by critics, and the most praise many of them could muster was to refer to it as a solid turn-based strategy experience. In direct contrast though, players have lavished superlatives upon this title, calling it the best digital representation of the tabletop game to date, and a compelling and vibrantly presented strategy game in its own right. Aspects singled out for recognition include its tactical depth and unit variety, its faith to the lore upon which it's based, exciting multiplayer skirmishes, and great customization options, with some even referring to Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector as a dream come true for 40k fans. The base game features Blood Angel Space Marines taking on the Tyranid Swarms, but at the time of recording, Orc, Necron, and Sisters of Battle Forces are all available via DLC. See. If Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector remains a fan favourite and continues to be supported, it may end up exhibiting a depth of combat that rivals a certain other fan favourite 40k strategy title. Number 4. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 2 PC 2009 with Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 2, Relic Entertainment took a big risk. They singled out the traditional real-time strategy base-building mechanics of the first game and took a melter gun to them, focusing instead on the detailed control and customization of smaller elite forces. It was a controversial choice and initially alienated many series fans, but when the superheated vapors cleared, Relic were still standing tall. Players are asked to carefully select their forces pre-battle, and no new units are available to build once the mission begins. With limited reinforcement options available, Dawn of War 2 demands that you think about how you're going to approach each stage, and pre-battle squad choices have game-changing consequences. The sergeants of each squad can also earn experience and equip war gear, giving the game a subtle RPG twang. At launch, Dawn of War included Orc, Eldar, and Tyranid forces, as well as Relic's own Blood Raven Space Marine chapter again, and subsequent DLC added the timeless power of the the Chaos Space Marines, and the hardware and manpower of the Imperial Guard into the excessively violent mix. A popular cooperative game mode called The Last Stand, where single characters battle hordes of AI-controlled enemies, was also added post-launch, resulting in a full package that's absolutely stuffed with thrilling content. Save for some minor gripes about reusing maps in the single-player campaign and the Tyranid threat feeling a little underwhelming, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 2 ingratiated itself with fans and critics alike. It was never quite able to dethrone its hallowed predecessor, though. More on that momentarily. Number 3. Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun PC, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series 2023. When it comes to the whole FPS power fantasy thing, the 40k Space Marine feels like the ideal candidate, and yet numerous past 40k games have completely failed to capture how it should feel to be clad in that hallowed armor wielding those sacred weapons. The pixelated retro-styled 3D shooter Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, however, absolutely nails it. Set on the same planet as Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, players take on the role of a powerful Ultramarine Stern Guard veteran and do battle with the forces of chaos, including cultists, demons, and chaos space marines. The blood and carnage left in the player's wake as they stomp around the corridors and sanctums of the Forge world is both spectacular and satisfying, and the range and impact of weapons on offer should please even the pickiest of would-be Astartes. 
Criticism was leveled at some bland level design and ropey enemy AI, but the overwhelming sentiment towards this 90s style FPS was pleasingly positive. Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun knew exactly what it needed to be – an unflinchingly violent, fast-paced, lore-packed blast through a satisfying variety of familiar foes, with the added bonus that the retro aesthetic makes those more venerable 40k fans out there feel all warm and fuzzy inside. From Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior in 2003 and the likes of Space Hulk Deathwing and Necromunda Hired Gun along the way, it took 20 years for a great 40k FPS to surface, and yet it looks like it predates the lot of them. Funny how things work out, isn't it? Number 2. Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus – PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One 2018. Our number 2 title, Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus, focuses directly on the cult of heavily augmented tech priests, servitors, and fabricators known as the Adeptus Mechanicus and their encounters with Necron forces on an eerie tomb world. This clash of machine-worshipping cyborgs with ancient immortal techno-skeletons provides quite the colourful backdrop for a turn-based tactical video game, and said video game proves to be an excellent example of its genre. Most who experienced Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus reported deep tactical gameplay that's not dissimilar to that of XCOM, but mixes in that irresistible 40k flavour while not losing any of the balance and quality. Battles are consistently tense, with tactical choices having a huge impact on battlefield success, and the combat mechanics do away with RNG and background dice rolling, meaning the player's fate is entirely in their own hands. While the game can feel difficult and unfair at first, this trickiness makes for a satisfyingly challenging experience once you get the battle system's intricacies through your servo skull. Where the game really shines, though, is in the way it draws you in. Using the developer Bulwark Studios' clear passion for the setting, as well as the visual design, the brave choice of featured factions, and some of the finest musical accompaniment to ever grace a strategy title, Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus envelops you in the eerie techno-catacombs of the Necron Tomb world and implants your consciousness directly into the cybernetically augmented cortex of a machine cult tech priest. Truly, this one is blessed by the Omnissiah. Number 1. Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War PC 2004 In September of 2004, Relic Entertainment and THQ released their Warhammer 40,000 RTS title Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War and saw the newly created Blood Raven Space Marine chapter taking on Orc, Eldar, and Chaos forces on the planet Tartarus. Over the next few years, three hefty expansions were released, meaning that by 2008, the Imperial Guard, Tau Empire, Necrons, Dark Eldar, and the Sisters of Battle were all available to command, making Dawn of War the most complete 40k experience to date. Sorry, Tyranid admirers. With its aggressive take on traditional RTS mechanics, where capture points must be taken and held to accrue resources, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War impressed critics and received an overwhelmingly positive response from players, quickly becoming the game of choice for those who wanted a digital Warhammer 40,000 experience. The, at the time, mind-blowing intro cinematic, as well as its detailed graphics, impressive animation, enjoyable storyline, and thrilling multiplayer skirmish gameplay all added up to an absolute treat for 40k enthusiasts who had thus far been used to clunky Space Hulk clones, slow-paced hex strategy, and an underwhelming shooter. Dawn of War had mass appeal and the quality to back it up, spawning a long-running franchise and bringing the tabletop experience to the forefront of strategic gaming. Of course, it's visually dated by today's standards, and the RTS genre in general has taken a back seat of late, but for its impact alone, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War deserves to be revered, and the fact that this 2004 RTS is still one of the most played 40k games to this day is a testament to its staying power. Like the Emperor of Mankind, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War remains undying on its golden throne, providing a beacon for 40k-loving gamers lost in a dimension of of mediocrity. What future title could possibly challenge its might? Well, we can't wait to find out.